He is uh, in his bar take today. He's been Malaysianized. And so he'll come and share the word. As may open your hearts as we receive the word of the Lord. Bless you, brother. Thank you, Pastor. Well, praise the Lord. It's wonderful to be here this morning. It's an honor to be here. Could we stand up one more time? Let's just lift our hands to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence that's here in this place today. We thank you for your anointing that is here in this place today. We thank you for your love that is here in this place today. Father, for the way that you have blessed us. And Lord, out of that blessing, Father, we give and we minister to those that are around us. We change atmospheres and places that we go. We give, Father, of that, that, that your anointing that is on the inside of us to change the lives of other people. That other people can come to know your Son, Jesus Christ. That other nations can be impacted, Father, with your love and with your word. And Father, this morning, we just yield ourselves unto you to speak to your family today. Speak to us. Father. Give us your message, Father. Flow in this place, Father, with your love to, to minister unto each and every person. Father, you know through your you know everything about every situation. You know, Father, exactly what needs to be said, exactly what needs to be done. And Father, you put your Holy Spirit in us to reveal to us and to speak through us your word, your will, your purpose, Father, and to love. And Lord, today we yield this whole environment unto you to be glorified in this place. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. As Pastor said, my name is Mark Irvin. I'm from America. And I do live in Germany. I have lived in Germany for the last 11 years. I have a ministry there, have two churches there. We also have a Bible school there. Our Bible school is mainly done over the internet. And I travel all over the world in different nations at least once a month right now. And the Lord told me in the beginning of this year, He said, I'm going to open up Malaysia this year. I'm going to send you to Malaysia. And I didn't know where. I didn't know who. I didn't know how it was going to happen. And about three weeks later, everything came together. And that's the reason that I'm here today. I'm here on divine appointment. And I'm so excited about what God is doing in this place. This place is full of love. It's full of people that are hungry for God, full of people that are hungry for the move of God in this nation and in other nations. And those are the kind of places that I want to go to. I want to go to places where people want to see their nation come to Jesus. And not only do they want to see their nation come to Jesus, but they're an outreach nation to go to other places, to other nations. And I believe that I'm in the right place today. Would you agree with me this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I brought some cards with me about our ministry. As I said, we do a lot of our ministry um, over our internet. The Lord said that this was going to be one of the, to us, that this would be one of the major tools that He uses for our ministry. I ran out of some of our other flyers, but if you are interested, we do have information on the back table back there. There are a lot of messages on our website. We do a lot of live streaming of conferences that we have in different places all over the world. And feel free to pick one of these up. We have uh, several things from, from this week here of this church. We did some interviews with uh, some of the different pastors that are here. And uh, there, there's some, some great, great things. And I'm so excited to be able to show what God is doing here in this place to the world. And so feel free to pick this up. And uh, you can go on and it'll bless you. There are a lot of things on there that'll bless you. Well, are you ready for the Word today? Look at your neighbor and say, the Word, the Word, the Word. Thank you, Father, for your Word. Amen? You can open your Bible this morning to Luke, the 17th chapter. Luke, the 17th chapter, and I want you to begin reading with me in verse 20. It says, And when he was demanded 
of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come. He answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is what? The kingdom of God is within you. Last night we began with this passage of Scripture, and those of you that weren't here last night, I know that they have it available on CD and on DVD, and we're going to teach the second part of this, and then the third part of this will be in the next service. The kingdom of God is not something that begins with observation. You must understand that the Jews during this time were looking for Jesus to physically establish his kingdom in the earth at that time. Do you remember that a week before he was crucified, that Jesus was, that he rode through the street on a donkey, they laid the palm branches out in front of him, and they cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. How many of you remember that in the Word? The word Hosanna means, save us now, King. Save us now, King. Do you remember after the resurrection of Jesus in Acts, the first chapter, the disciples said, Jesus, are you going to establish your kingdom right now in the earth? And this was the thing during Jesus' time in the earth, his earthly ministry. This is what they were looking for. Jesus, are you going to set your kingdom up here in the earth? Are you going to deliver us at this time from the Roman Empire? It's the natural kingdom. This kingdom is coming to the earth. There is a day that Jesus is going to come back as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Heaven is going to meet the earth. The curse will be lifted off of this earth. We're going to be with Him and rule and reign with Jesus for a thousand years. Are you looking forward to that time? Well, Jesus said to this that those that were looking for the kingdom to be established upon the earth, he said it's not going to come with observation. It's not going to come in a way that you can see it with your eyes and you can touch it and you can feel it. He was talking to them about something that would begin inside of man. He said it's not going to be on the outside. He said it is going to begin on the inside. Do you know what happened to you when you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you know what happened to you when you were born again? When you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, God Himself through the Holy Spirit came to live in you in your human spirit. Hallelujah. Don't tell me that you're not powerful. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you're powerful. What makes you powerful? Jesus makes you powerful. What makes you powerful? The fact that through what Jesus did for you and I, God could come to live in you. Greater is He, 1 John 4.4, 4, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's a little devil in the world. There's a big God in you. Amen? And the God that is in you is always bigger than the little devil that's in the world right now. God's kingdom is in you. And Jesus, to this that were listening to him at the time prophesied to them that there's going to be a day that the kingdom of God is going to be on the inside of man. Hallelujah. Isn't that powerful? 
Isn't that powerful? Jesus is the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Hello, kings. Jesus is your King. Hello, Lord. Jesus is your Lord. The word kingdom means king's domain. Do you remember when God created man in the beginning in Genesis 1 and verse 26 and 27 that God told Adam and Eve that they were to have dominion upon the earth? That they were to rule and reign upon the earth? You see, God is a spirit And when he created man, he created man in his image, in his likeness. You and I, we were created as spirit beings. We are created completely different than any other form of life. We're created different than angels. We're created different than animals. We're created different than plant life. You and I were created in God's image, in His likeness. God is a Father, and He needed some kids. God is love, and because He's love, He needed something like Himself that He could manifest this love to. And He wanted to create something like Himself that would live the way He lives, that would do things the way that He does things. God has dominion. He created man to have dominion. God is a father. He created man to be a son and a daughter. God believes and speaks. He created it so that you and I would believe. Believe what? Believe His Word. Believe His will. And we would speak. And things would happen. How many of you know the verse in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, and verse 12, where it says, The Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, dividing asunder the soul and the spirit and the joint and the marrow of the bone. The, word, the, the term two-edged sword means a double-voiced sword. Double voice. Well, what does that mean? The Word of God came out of God. He spoke it. There was life in it. And the Word of God is to get on the inside of you. And you're to speak it. And there's life in it. God created you and I to function the way that He functions. And so, how does this system work? How does God release Himself? He's in you. And how does He release Himself from the inside of you? That, how does he release himself out? He puts his entire governing structure on the inside of you. Wow. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that powerful? How many of you here this morning? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm here this morning. God is in you. God's kingdom is in you. You are kings. You are priests. God's glory is in you. You have on the inside of you the same thing that was in the tabernacle in the Old Testament. You have the glory of God on the inside of you. You have the, what you have in you what the priest only once a year could go into. You have in you the same thing that parted the Red Sea. You have in you the same thing that parted the Jordan River. You have in you the same thing that that caused 100,000 people to die one day. You have in you the same thing that brought healing, that brought deliverance. God is in you. His kingdom is in you. His power is in you. Isn't that powerful? There's three different people groups that the Word of God is speaking to. There is the Jew, there is the Gentile, and there is the church. The church or the family of God. The Bible can be broken up into three different categories. 
You have in the Old Testament man that was not born again. Man did not have the Spirit of God on the inside of him. Man could not have the Spirit of God on the inside of him until after the cross. Now, I did not say that man was not saved in the Old Testament when man put his faith in what the sacrifices stood for, which was the coming redemptive work of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was saved in the Old Testament on credit. Looking forward to someone that would come and pay the price for sin. In the Old Testament, you have a lot of teaching to man that was limited in the way that he lived because man did not have the Spirit of God within him from the fall of Adam on. And so he lived by his senses. He lived by sin's knowledge. Then you have another part of the Word of God pertaining to the life of Jesus and the teaching of Jesus. And when Jesus came into this earth, He came into this earth as the first Son of God, God being His Father, Him being God's Son. And Jesus, through His teaching, was regularly preparing man for something that would come, for a change on the inside of man, for the fact that an old relationship way with God would go and a new relationship way with God would come in. An old covenant going out and a new covenant coming in. How many of you know we got a better covenant established on better promises? It's better for you and I in the New Testament time than it was for them in the Old Testament time. Isn't that true? Aren't you glad that you don't have to bring your sheep to church this morning for any failure that you made last week? Anybody make any mistakes this week that you had to say, Father, forgive me? Aren't you glad you don't have to do that today? We're in a different time period. Jesus regularly prepared man. Think about the song that we sang today. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. At that time, it was thy kingdom come. Something is going to come. At that time, man could not call God Father. The only one that could call God Father was Jesus. And Jesus, 49 times in the Gospels, called God Father. It was a shock for man that was in the earth at that that time. They had never heard a, a, a human being call God Father. In fact, one time they wanted to kill Jesus. They wanted to throw him over a cliff because he called God Father. He said if God is his Father, that means that he is God's Son. Relationship. He was preparing man for something that would come. He was preparing man for a change on the inside. And this is what you have in the Gospels. But then you move on to specific Teaching that was saved for a new time period, a new generation. And does anybody know where that teaching is found? It is found in the epistles. Now I'm going to show you something this morning that is going to unlock who you are. Who are you? Are you a servant? We were servants in the Old Testament. Man was a servant that served. But in the New Testament, we are sons and we are daughters of God. And as sons and daughters, praise God, we serve. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon the prophets. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would do things. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit does not just come upon man. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is in man. There's a difference. Jesus told the disciples, He said, the Holy Spirit is with you, but there's going to be a day, hallelujah, and that day has come, the Holy Spirit will be in you. Amen? In the New Testament, we are the righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says, God made Him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made, hallelujah, the righteousness of God in Christ. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. In the Spirit, through the new birth, I got good news for you this morning, you are complete. 
Amen? You got a holy God in you. And for Him to live in you, He had to complete you in the Spirit. For Him to live in you, He had to clean you up in the Spirit. A Holy Spirit cannot live in a Spirit that is full of sin. Isn't that true? He's a Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit cannot live in a place that's full of sin. God is in us. Alright. Go with me. Let's look at a powerful passage of Scripture. Ask your neighbor, so are you ready for a powerful passage of Scripture? First Peter 2, 9, and I'll just quote this verse, says that we are a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. That's speaking of kingdom. We're a royal priesthood, a holy nation that we should show forth the praises of God. He's called us out of darkness. We've come out of darkness, and we're in the kingdom. Hallelujah. And into his marvelous light, or into that place that the priest could not go into in the old, or, or the only one that could go into uh, in the Old Testament, the holiest of holies, the place where the glory of God was, the place where the presence of God is. In the New Testament, you and I have that in us. Where is it? It's in the kingdom. How many of you know that? That God can, God lights up heaven with His glory. That God fills up heaven with His glory. God has filled you up on the inside. He put Himself in you. His glory is there. Hallelujah. Go with me to Mark, the fourth chapter. And I want, you, I want, to, I want to show you something. This entire governing system is in you. If you are born again, how many of you today, you've received the Lord Jesus Christ? How many of you today, you can say, yes, I'm born again. I'm going to heaven. God is my Father. My life has changed. And what a day that was. I received Jesus when I was seven years old. And you know what? Um, someone shared with me, John 3 and verse 16, for God so loved the world. Did anybody here get saved with that verse? John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's a wonderful verse, isn't it? I mean, think about the power that is in that verse. Millions upon millions have been saved just by that one verse. Maybe some of you got saved with Romans 10 and verse 9 and 10. You believe in your heart that Jesus raised from the dead and you confessed Him as your Lord and, and you're born again today, aren't you? God is in you. In the new birth is a treasure. In the new birth is a new life. In the new birth is the, the, the nature of God, the life of God, the love of God. All that you needed to complete you is in that new birth experience. In the new birth is God's kingdom imparted into you to where you can live the kind of life that God intended for you to live from the beginning. If God is a spirit being and He created us as spirit beings, then wouldn't you agree with me that God wanted us to live out of the Spirit? How many of you know God lives out of the Spirit? And how many of you know that He's powerful? How many of you know there's power in, in who God is? There's no greater than God. He is the highest authority. There's no authority higher than Him. There's no power higher than Him. There's no limitations with God. And He put Himself, His entire kingdom, His entire governing structure, the way He does things, He put that in you. You know, this is the kind of stuff that the devil does not want us to know. Because when we know 
that this is in us, when we know what God put in us, guess what? Say goodbye to down, defeated, devil days. Tell your neighbor goodbye to those kind of days. And say hello, victory days. Is there anybody in Malaysia that needs to know victory days? Is there anybody in Malaysia that needs to know joy and healing days? Is there anybody in Malaysia that needs to be freed from, from the works of the devil? There's a lot of people, isn't there? And aren't you glad that that's happening in this nation right now? And happening in other nations. You're a part of God working in this nation. Hallelujah. It's wonderful, isn't it? The Word says that we have a treasure in earthen vessels. Well, what's the treasure? The treasure is this kingdom, this ability to reign in this life, this kingdom that is imparted into man through the new birth. You're a treasure. You're a treasure box. Look at your neighbor and say, Hello, treasure box. Woo, hallelujah. God is in you. Tell your neighbor, God is in you. Tell your neighbor, you got the great God in you. He's in you, hallelujah. His nature's in you. His kingdom is in you. His, listen to this, law is in you. Do you know what His law is? Love. Pastor talked today so, uh, uh, about reaching out to the poor, reaching out to the hungry, reaching out to those that are in need, reaching out to people that you regularly come in contact with. What is that? What is that on the inside of you that wants to reach out? What is that on the inside of you that wants to change the heart of a person? That wants to change the life of a person? In order for change to come, there has to be authority behind it. In order to change a person, there has to be something behind that that causes that change. Do you know what that is? It's the kingdom of God in you that is run by love. Amen. Amen. Love is behind this authority. Love is behind this power. The treasure's in you. The kingdom is in you. Now, there's something that is found in the New Testament that Jesus mentioned and Paul talked about several times. And in this is the ability to lock... Unlock the kingdom that is within you. How many would like to see that? Do you want to be in this life with a closed treasure box or an open treasure box? How many of you know that an open one is better? We don't want to wait until we get to heaven like some people, believers, that say, wow, is this the one that caused the nations to tremble? Is this the one that brought great fear into the world? And it's in reference to the spirit of fear that is working in the world today. Is this the one? We don't want to be like that. We don't want to get to heaven and be culture shocked. How many of you know you don't want to get there and be culture shocked? You and I can reign in this life. You and I can walk in victory in this life. You and I can have a victorious Christian life. Look at your neighbor and say, Hallelujah for a victorious Christian life now. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Well, where is it? The ability to live this way. 
in you. Tell your neighbor it's in you. How is it in me? God's in you. His kingdom is in you. His ability, kingdom, his ability to reign in this life as a king. Look at your neighbor and say, hello, king. Woo, hello, king. (laughs) Somebody got me this shirt from the church here. It's a king shirt. Somebody took me to, to a restaurant the other day, and the owner of the restaurant, he just kept bringing this food out. He said, it's on the house, it's on the house. He said, you're eating like a king today. And at the end, he brought a special fruit. And he said, this is the fruit that the kings eat. <laughs> I ate it. I can't tell you that I would regularly eat it (laughs) but I will tell you this that the food is great here everybody keeps asking me do you want western food western no I want Malaysian food or Chinese food and I'm here to enjoy what's here hallelujah I can go to America and eat hamburgers not here You have the ability in Malaysia to reign, to live, to have authority and exercise through your life as a king. Why? Because the kingdom of God is in you. How many of you know Jesus had no down days? How many of you know Jesus had no bad hair days? How many of you know Jesus walked in victory? Well, that was Jesus, and after all, Jesus was the Son of God, and and he he had a special anointing. You know what? When Jesus came to the earth, he laid aside his deity, Godhead powers that he used before coming to the earth, and he became a man like you and I, anointed with the Holy Spirit. And he came here and lived 33 years in the earth. He didn't just come and go to the cross and die. He came and he spent some time on the earth so that we could observe the relationship that he had with God as Father and so that we could observe the way that a man is supposed to live, hallelujah, in this earth. Didn't Jesus say, the works that I do, shall you do also? And greater works than these, shall you do? Because I go to my Father. Didn't John write in 1 John 4 and verse 17, As He is, so are we. Hallelujah. Not when we get to heaven, but in this world. How many of you believers? How many believers here this morning? What do you do? Believers, I got a revelation for you. Believe. And what do we believe? We believe the Word. And if the Word tells us something, then it's so. Isn't that true? And the Word tells us that the kingdom of God is in us. The Word tells us that God is in us. The Word tells us that the Holy Spirit is in us. The Word tells us this, that this entire the governing system of God was imparted into you and I through the new birth. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. What if this whole body of believers here today and in this nation would get a full revelation of the fact that God is in them, that His kingdom is in them, 
and they realize that there's nothing in this world that they cannot dominate over. There's no devil that can keep them down. There's no devil that can stop them. I'm telling you, God is in you to take this nation for the Lord Jesus Christ. The devil has had this nation long enough. And where's the power to change the nation? Where's the power to move in revival? Where's the power to bring in the lost? Where's the power to minister healing to those that are sick? Where's the power to deliver those that are bound up by the devil? That power is in you. Hallelujah. And it's backed by the force of love. Hallelujah. Amen? Have you found Mark the fourth chapter yet? Ask your neighbor, have you found it yet? The preacher was waiting for you to get there. <laughs> Mark 4. Now, now, I want you to notice there, there's a word here. This word, are you ready? Is the word mystery. How many of you like mysteries? Everybody say mystery. Jesus used this word. Jesus talked about mysteries. Whoa. Mystery. Let me give you a definition for this word mystery. Mystery is those things, a biblical definition, those things that are beyond your intellect. Now remember, in the Old Testament, man didn't have the Spirit of God within him, so he was left only to the intellect, only to live by his senses, only to live by information that he took within himself through his senses. That's a limited way of living. How many of you know that's true? It's limited. Think about the people in the world. Think about those that, that are limited. How many, how many of you know, you know, and, and thank God for doctors. Everybody say thank God for doctors. A doctor can go to the highest university of the land. And he can accumulate all the education. But that doctor in his Education will always come to a place of limit. Where he has to tell a patient, there is no chance for me to help you. There is nothing I can do for you. You can have someone that has the best financial education in the world, but they come to their limits. All of the governing systems of this world are failing today because man has come to the end of the limit. To the end of his education. You can educate, 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 but somewhere in your life you will come to a point where you are limited. To your intellect and to the information that you have. Isn't that true? But in God, guess what? There are no limits. Oh, how do you explain the virgin birth to an intellectual? You can't do that. How do you explain God coming to live on the inside of a person with the intellect? You can't do that. How can you explain a miracle like what we had last night in the service where people had growth in their body and when they left, we had a woman last night, she had, she had a, a growth in her foot and when she left, it was gone. How, how do you explain that kind of stuff to the intellect? How do you explain all the people that got healed and last night testified that were here last Saturday night and they came back uh, uh, last night and, 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 and all the symptoms were gone from their body because of a wave that moved across this place and brought healing into their body? You can't explain that kind of stuff with the intellect. How do you explain walking on the water? 
How many of you know you can't explain that with the intellect? Jesus did things in the earth that were beyond the intellect. He did it all the time. He lived beyond limits. Hallelujah. For Jesus to heal the sick was another day in the office. For Jesus to cast out a demon spirit was another day in the office. For Jesus to walk on the water was another day in the office. For Jesus to to multiply bread and fish was another day in the office. Jesus lived a life without limits. Under a different governing structure. And what is that? The kingdom. The kingdom. Seek ye first the what? The kingdom. Where is the kingdom? It's in you. So what does that mean? We recognize that God is in us. We recognize we have something in us that has no limits. There's no